Easter. Hallelujah. He is alive. He has risen from the grave. Thank you, Lord. Will you stand with us and let's get ready to praise our Lord this morning. Hallelujah. This morning on Resurrection Day, Lord, we love you. We thank you that you are our risen Savior, that there is nothing greater than you, that everything you touch is good, 
everything that you do is good. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. We thank you for Friday, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you took the ultimate sacrifice because you love us, because you care for us. And Lord, we thank you for Saturday when you went to hell and took the keys to death, hell, and the grave to, and took back what was rightfully ours. And Lord, we thank you for Sunday morning where you rose again and gave us a path directly to the Father. There is no one greater than you, Jesus, and we love you this morning. We praise you, and we can't wait to see what you're going to do today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Love it. Absolutely love it. A full Full church this morning. Praise the Lord. You can be seated for just a minute. I'm just going to stand here and stare at you for a couple minutes. Awesome. So good. Yeah, no, that's not weird at all, is it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have just a couple announcements this morning. Um, we're not going to be too long, but I did want to let Brother Floyd talk here for just a minute. And we got some really big good news this morning. Go ahead, brother. All right, so um, the, we're going to start a men's ministry, so a call to all men, 18 to 150. You can be here. Um, we're going to start April 12th. Uh, the Lord put it on my heart very strong to get something moving now with all of us men. We can be a powerful, powerful group of men here at this church, which we already have, and the Lord's just going to bless us even more. So April 12th, 6 o'clock, uh, we'll get together and just discuss some things, get everybody's ideas, and go from there. So see you April, tw April 12th, 6 p.m. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. I love it. Floyd, you know, Floyd so clearly heard from the Lord. He, he so, you know, it's been on his heart for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm just thankful. I'm thankful to all of our men. Um, I'm thankful to the men that uh, put the signs up this week. Um, they look really good. Uh, really, really good. JP wanted to keep putting them on a little bit crooked, but I, uh, he's not paying any attention to me whatsoever. <laughs> but we really appreciate it. Bill did a lot of work this week, too, and little things, little bits at a time. And so we're, uh, we're just thankful. We're thankful for this, you know, that we have the building, that we can do things to it to make it a home. And it really has turned into a home. And we're so thankful, uh, thankful to everyone that's been doing everything. Um, we have a youth night here in a couple weeks, Pastor Diane Wright, um, the 18th, is that right? April 10th, so the week before. Wednesday night at 6 p.m., um, please come out for that, see all our, our teens and our, our youth, um, they just bring the word, they, you know, they're so talented, and um, we, we want to make sure we, we support them and everything that they do, because they are really, um, I, I always point at the teens as the turning point in the life of this church, and, uh, you know, um, and I'm going to talk about them in just a second, but they really were, they were the ones that got us up out of our seats, they were the ones that got us all fired up, um, and, uh, and we're just so thankful for them. So we want to support them on the 10th. It's a Wednesday. We'll tell you about it next week, too, but um, that's on April the 10th. So I wanted to share something with you right before we take up the offering, and I wanted to read something to you first. Um, and it's in Romans chapter 5, and it's in verses 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into a place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Amen. 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 So I wanted to share that with you. I, was, um, I, I think that we need to know today that um, when you give, when you, when you serve the Lord, when you do all those things... He gives you peace and joy no matter where you are, no matter what's coming coming up, no matter what you might be anxious about, no matter, no matter what that God gives you. At the end of it all, there's peace and joy because of what Jesus Christ has done for us, uh, because what he has given us. He has given us power. He has given us, you know, uh, courage. He's given us all these things. So no matter what you got coming up, you know, there's peace and joy at the end of it. And I was talking to Caleb. Um, you didn't know I was going to use you as an example today, did you? 
I, sh I should make him make him see your suit today. You look so nice. Everybody looks so nice today. But uh, I was talking to Caleb. Um, I think it was it was Good Friday. Good Friday evening. Caleb and I were talking, and they have um, Caleb and Allie and Ben and Cassie and Robbie, um, all of our kids that are getting ready to go out into the world. They have they have something I never had. They have something that, that I wish I would have known about when I was 18 years old. Um, but they, they, are, they are anxious, I would say anxious, about what they got coming up. You know, um, Ben, Ali, Caleb are just going to Florida. They're going to ministry school in Florida. Cassie's going to Malone University and going to college. Robbie's going to college. You know, all these kids are like they're, they're leaving and going into the world and growing up really, really fast. And these are the kids that we've seen since they were about this tall that we give all the credit in the world to for, and for just bringing life to the church. But they are, I can tell you because I've talked to all of them, they're anxious. They really don't know what's coming. They have no idea what's going to be coming their way. They don't know. Like, they have to get jobs. They have to um, move, completely move out of their homes. Um, they have a lot going on. But they might be anxious, but they know that there is peace and there is joy in what's coming for them. You know, they, because they are going to be serving. They have already, already have for many years, but they are going to be serving the Lord throughout their whole life. And so that is just such a blessing to know um, that, you know, that our, our kids are going out into the world, but they're going out with the power of Jesus Christ, that nothing can stop them, that no matter what comes against them, they are going to come out on top. Amen? Amen. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for, for just that peace and joy that you give each and every one of us when we know you. We thank you, Lord, that, that, um, that everything is at our disposal and that we don't have to really worry about anything, that we may be anxious, but we know what comes at the end. You have already won the victory. Hallelujah. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So if you uh, if you need a uh, offering envelope, just raise your hand up, and the ushers will bring one around to you. Uh, but as you bring your tithes and offerings up this morning, greet somebody, tell them you love them, and let's just enjoy praising our God. Amen.
the blood. Thank you for your son. Hallelujah, we have been set free by the blood of the lamb. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's continue to worship him this morning. Hallelujah. this morning. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. We thank you, Jesus, that you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. What you did for us, nobody else could do, but you willingly laid down your life for us, and you trusted your life into the hands of your Father, and he raised you from the dead on the third day, and because of that, we have life. I thank you for life in your name. I thank you for abundant life. I thank you, Lord, that even today that that offer of life goes out, it continues, it hasn't lost its power, that your blood continues to cleanse. We thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do in this room. You came to this earth to do something about our suffering, and you are still able to deliver, to set free. And so, Father, as we sit in your presence today, I believe that you're going to set many free, that you're going to set many on a path that, that is totally different from the way that that they walked in here, Lord, that you are going to bring people on a path of life today. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. 
We are going to go ahead and uh, dismiss our nursery. Our nursery is zero through pre-K. Our New Day Kids is kindergarten through fourth grade. And our full throttle uh, preteens is fifth through eighth grade. And our youth, which is ninth through twelfth grade, is going to stay in the service with us. And while they're dismissing, I see many, many new faces. So let's all just take a minute and you can stand back up because you'll be sitting for just a little bit and just greet somebody. Just give somebody a hug. Tell them it's great to see them on Easter. Find somebody you've never met before. You're good. Take your time. Talk to somebody. Next Sunday, we're going to start officially on the road to 300. So I don't, I don't know if the ushers have a count for today yet or not. Not yet. They count, they count the kids when they go down to the classroom because it's hard to, to see them. But I think today is, is going to be a record for us. Um, and actually, next week, I'm going to preach on why it's important that the church grows. Why, why, why do we do things like the road to 300? It's, it's actually God's mandate that his church is constantly and consistently growing. And if we're doing what he told us to do, which is go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, then even though you start small, a church is will grow as long as you're following the Great Commission and and sticking close to the Lord. So uh, we'll start that next week, um, and we've been we keep track every week of attendance, uh, and I have the last several weeks. We'll start reporting that next week, and it's going to be good. We have 300 chairs, and so Scotty has said he will stand if he needs to. <laughs> Whatever we need to do, but this place is going to be full, and we've already, we're already, you know, we, we're, um, we're looking at starting the, the classrooms. If you look behind you, that all that empty area back there will be two stories of classrooms for our kids. And so uh, that's going to be what we do first because we want our kids to have somewhere to go, to have, you know, to have our youth, to have their uh, class, the nursery, all of that stuff. Um, so that's the first thing that we're going to build. But we're already talking about putting balconies in this place. <laughs> once, we fill up, once we fill up this level, we, we found some places where we can put balconies. So uh, we're just believing God for big things. We're, we're, not, we're not getting... Uh, we're not having small thinking. We're, we're thinking forward because we know that people are more hungry today than they have ever been for the Lord. Because we're coming to a point in this world where it, it's like when Joshua uh, said, it's Joshua 24, 15, where he says, Choose ye this day whom ye will serve, either the gods of this world or our God. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So while many people are home today celebrating Transgender Visibility Day, you all are in the house of the Lord. So you've already, you've already won. You've already won because you've said... I'm going to get up 
and I'm going to get into the Lord's house today. There's something in you that tells you that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And if you haven't called on him as your Savior today, that, that's, that's going to happen. You're going to have an opportunity to do that. The Holy Spirit is in this place. He is moving. He's speaking to your heart right now. That anointed worship just softens your heart and prepares you to receive the word. And so I know by the authority of the name of Jesus, that this valley is having revival. Do you know how I know? Because revival isn't a thing that God sends. Revival is a thing that men and women of God carry inside of them. And there are men and women of God in this house today. You're carrying revival inside of you. And I think it was, I can't remember who said it. Uh, one, one, of our, one of our preachers, it might have been Mark Colley. Is he here? Where is he? Oh, he's, oh, he's working. <laughs> but he said what you do inside here, inside this church, is not what's the most important thing. It's what you do outside this church. And so many of you are carrying that revival inside of you. And everywhere you go, you affect the people around you. You, you actually control the atmosphere because you bring the Holy Spirit of God who is greater than the spirit who is in this world. And so revival is happening. And we're going to need many more churches than just this church to hold. I mean, there's going to be churches all throughout this valley that are going to be preaching the word of God with power. And they're going to be filled because God is real Light shines brightest in the darkness. It doesn't matter. Listen, don't, don't spend one night awake worried about what's happening in this world. Don't spend one moment thinking, what's going to happen to me and my family in this economy, in this election year, and all that. It, God is God. He is above every government. The government's not going to save us. Respect the government. You know, participate in the government. But the government's not going to save you. You know what I looked up this morning? There's something called, I'm, I'm preaching on only Jesus, okay? I'm not preaching, but I just, I looked up something this morning. And it's, it's there's actually a day every year called tax-free day. And that sounds like a good thing, right? But what it actually means is, that is the day of the year that you have worked enough to pay all your taxes. In other words, if starting January 1st, you gave your entire paycheck every single week to the government, on that day, your taxes would be paid. Do you know when that day is? This year, April 16th. It has nothing to do with tax day. It's April 16th. So if you had given your entire paycheck to the government from January 1st till two weeks from now, more than two weeks from now, you will have paid the taxes that you owe this year. The government's not going to save us. The government buys, you know, $5,000 hammers and, and things like that. It's only through the blood of Jesus Christ that we will be saved. And that's good news. And, you know, that's, that's good news to us because that's where we've placed our trust. And today I want you... I want to just hammer that home to you, that it is only Jesus. It's only Jesus, but it only takes Jesus. It's not like we're desperate, we only have Jesus. It's all we need is Jesus. He is the only one we need. He's the only one who gave his life on a cross, descended into hell, defeated death, hell, and the grave, and rose up again, and then ascended to the right hand of God and sent his Holy Spirit to live inside of his people. We're not alone. Don't ever be afraid because you are never alone when you know Jesus Christ because the very Spirit of God will live inside of you. And if you felt alone today, if you've come here today because you, you feel like I'm just, I'm, I'm out on my own. I don't know what to do with my life. I don't know how to make it better. I don't know how to get out of the, the holes that I've dug and out of the patterns that I've set for my life. Uh, then I have good news for you. Jesus Christ is your answer. His spirit. So I want to read to you from he, uh, Hebrews chapter 2. And if, if you can put it up on the board, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. Do we have, we have New Living? Okay. So I'm going to read Hebrews chapter 2, uh, starting in verse 14, and then I'm going to read through 
uh, chapter 3, verse 1. This is the new, oh, he got it up, that's quick. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. We also know that the son did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people. Since he himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. That's what the New Living Translation says, but the other versions say tempted. When you are being tempted, he is able to help you. And so, dear brothers and sisters who belong to God and are partners with those called to heaven, think carefully about this Jesus whom we declare to be God's messenger and high priest. I want you to think carefully about this Jesus that we preach today, and only Jesus. That was his message. That was God's message. That was the message of the prophets. That was the message from the beginning to the end. In, in Genesis, the message was, as soon as man fell, the message from God was that the seed of the woman would come and she would crush the head of the serpent. The seed being a capital S, a proper name. Jesus is the seed of the woman who would crush the serpent. There are not many ways to God. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only way. And you sit in here today because there is something placed inside of you from, from before you were born. Because he says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And you sit here today because there's a witness inside of you that says, I I know there's something about this Jesus. I know there's something about that name. Many people get angry when they hear that name, but not you. You're sitting here today. You know that there's peace in that name. You know that there's power in that name. You know that there's joy and deliverance in that name. You know that there's healing in that name. That's why there's so much pushback against that name, because it is the only name by which men may be saved. And you may have tried many things. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You may have tried many things. You may have tried relationships. You may have tried alcohol or drugs or wh whatever it is. Pick your addiction, whatever your, your favorite thing was. But nothing will satisfy you because you were created to know him. You were created to serve him. You were created to love him. And something in you brought you into his house today, not by accident, but by design. Because he loves you and he's calling you into relationship with him. Because we sing that song that says, that says, thank you Jesus for the blood applied. And you may not understand what that means, but this is what it means. Jesus died for every, every single person who ever lived and ever will live. But that blood has to be applied. Just like in Exodus chapter 12, when, when the plague was coming on Egypt, and, and the Lord told Moses, you have to apply the blood to the doorposts so that the death angel will pass over you. That blood has to be applied to the doorpost of your heart. You can't just say, I believe there is a God. I believe there is a greater being. That God has a name, and his name is Jesus Christ. And you must call on his name to be saved. Only Jesus, only Jesus, not Muhammad, not Buddha, not alcohol, not wine, not women. I was talking to a, a friend about the book of Ecclesiastes. And if, you, if you've never read the book of Ecclesiastes, it's written by Solomon, who is you know, the smartest man who ever lived outside of Jesus. And it was written by him when he turned away from his relationship with God. And it's like the most depressing book of the Bible. But basically, basically it's Solomon who had everything. 
He was king. He had everything. And he says, I tried money. Money didn't make me happy. I tried women. He had 700 wives. Women didn't make him happy. I don't know. Yeah, that doesn't even seem like it makes sense. Women didn't make him happy. I tried power. Power didn't make me happy. I tried knowledge. Do you know that Solomon was like a botanist? He, he like named many and identified. He tried knowledge, science, scientific things. Ultimately, it never satisfied him. He was on a search for something and he tried everything. And you know that the last verse of Ecclesiastes says, so what, what is it? You know, what ev everything is, he, he was saying, everything is useless. Everything is vanity. There's nothing new under the sun. And at the end of the book of Ecclesiastes, so he says, I've come to this conclusion. The whole will of man or the whole purpose of man is to serve God. That's it. Smartest man in the world. Let him make the mistakes for us. And even if you've made every one of those mistakes that he's made, there is the blood of Jesus for you today. All you need to do is make the decision. I'm going to quit looking to those things. I'm going to quit trying to do it on my own. I'm going to turn my life over to the only one who can save. So let's look at this, at this verse or, or these few verses in Hebrews. And it says this. This is verse 14. For only as a human being could he die. Jesus had to come to earth because he is an eternal being. There had to be a death, a payment for our sin. There had to be. That's the only way. Blood shed was the only way to take away sin. And so he had to come to this earth because only as a human being could he die. If he stayed in heaven, he's an eternal being. Do you know that you are eternal beings? Your spirit, you, your life, can, your existence consists of three things. You are a body, that's your physical body. You are a soul, that is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And you are a spirit. And your spirit is the eternal part of you that will go on forever. Whether it be in heaven, in paradise, or whether it be hell, in eternal torment. But this body, this physical body, is the only part of us that dies. It will die earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. It is temporary. And so to live with only the pleasure of this body in mind is so short-minded. It's such small thinking. Because we have an eternal part of us. So it says, only by coming in a human body could he die. There are many there are eternal beings everywhere that we can't see. You know that the same, you know, if you read the story of Jesus, you, it, you, you read how the devil entered into Judas and caused Judas to betray him. And, and about all of these invisible yet eternal beings. The same demons that Jesus cast out of people are still here today. There's, they're not being born. There's not more being added. They're still here today. They don't die. So he had to become a man so that he could die. I got good news for you about those, those same spirits and those demons. They're no smarter today than they were in Jesus' day. Because here's the whole plan of Satan. I'm going to take out God's people. I'm going to take out God's people. I'm going to take out everything of God. I'm going to destroy everything he loves. I'm going to destroy it all. And so God sends his son. And Jesus knew, or, or Satan knew who Jesus was. Because he, he met him in the desert after he had been fasting for 40 days. And he, he said, if you're the son of God, if you're the son of God, Satan will always question your identity if you are who they say you are if you are who you think you are and so he challenged him so Satan knew he was the son of God yet he still played right into God's hands because he's no intellectual match for our heavenly father and so what he thought would be his greatest victory 
in having Jesus crucified and killed on a cross was his final defeat. And he's no smarter today than he was on that day. And you, as children of God, have the mind of Christ. And you're going to know too much to fall for the plan of Satan for your life. He has a plan to kill you. He has a plan to steal from you, to destroy you. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. There is nothing that your enemy has planned against you that God cannot overcome by his power and his wisdom. Not a thing. 1 Corinthians 2.8 says that if they had understood the wisdom of God and they being demons, principalities, powers, these things that the world wants us to live in awe and fear of, but they're fallen They've lost the power of God. They've lost the presence of God. They've lost the mind of Christ. If they had understood the plan of God, they would have never crucified the king of glory. Satan always overplays his hand, and he's overplayed his hand in your life today because you're sitting in a church. Because whatever he brought into your life to destroy you, instead of you giving up, Turning, turning away, just giving up on life, you said, I got one more round in me. I'm going to give this Jesus thing a try. I'm going to go to church this morning. I'm going to see if God is God. And I got news for you. He is God. And there is none like him. And there is none who can save except for Jesus Christ. This isn't, church isn't a game. Church isn't a uh, a social club. This is a place where people who are struggling, who are, are having, you know, we, we face things because we do have an enemy. But we have one who is greater. This is where you come. I, I'm a child of the 80s. This is where you come. And when you sit in church, you should hear that, that Rocky theme start to play in the back of your mind. You know, when he finally gets over feeling sorry for himself and he starts to get stronger. That's who Jesus Christ, he's your champion. He gives you the power. He said, behold, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. You are coming up today, no matter where you are. You might have walked in here with your head down. You might have walked in here with a load of shame on your shoulders, but you're going up from here. This is the lowest you'll ever be. It's, it's up from here, higher, higher because of the power and the presence of Jesus Christ that becomes yours when you call on him as your Lord and Savior. So only as a human being could he die. So he left heaven. He became poor so that we might become rich. He left heaven to become a man. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the love that drove him to do that? And then it says, only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had, past, present, future tense, had, past tense, the power of death by dying. As near as I can figure, by searching through the scripture, I found that when Jesus died on the cross, you know, we, we talk about Good Friday and then Saturday and then he's raised from the dead on Sunday. As near as I can figure, and there might be more, he did two things when he was in the tomb and everybody else had given up hope. According to Ephesians 4 verses 8 through 10, he descended into hell. You know, Jesus is like... He's, he's not a, a weak, he's no weakling. <laughs> he's a conquering king. He descended into hell and he took from Satan what Satan had taken from Adam and Eve. And the second thing he did, and this is in Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11 and 12. I don't, can you find that, uh, Andy? Hebrews 9, 11 and 12 says... He has become the high priest over all the good things that have come. He has entered that greater, 
This is what he did. He entered the greater, more perfect tabernacle in heaven, which was not made by human hands and is not part of this created world. With his own blood, not the blood of goats and calves, he entered the most holy place once for all time and secured our redemption forever. He went into hell and took the keys. He went into heaven and he gave his blood to cleanse us. Not, not on the earthly temple where the, priests, where the priests ministered. He went into the heavenly temple itself and he offered himself once for all time. Listen, sin has been dealt with. Finally, has your sin been dealt with? You have to apply the blood to the doorpost. Sin has been defeated. Death has been defeated. But it only becomes defeated in your life when you call on the name of Jesus. So only by dying could he defeat the devil who has held us in fear all of our lives. You don't have to be in fear one more day of your life. You don't have to lay your head down on your pillow one more night and think, what would happen if I died? What's happening in my family? What's happening in my job? What's happening here? And, and all of this worry, all of this burden comes upon you. You don't have to do that for one more night. You can put your trust in Jesus Christ. And he says to give us his burdens and to our burdens and to take his yoke upon us because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. He will make an exchange, righteousness for sin. Peace for turmoil, joy for sadness. He will take those things that have been sent to destroy you and he will turn them around for your good. You are this close to your breakthrough today. You are this close to calling on the name of Jesus Christ and seeing your life turn around forever. But you have to apply the blood. So he defeated death hell and the grave as he laid in that tomb for three days he wasn't sleeping listen church God's not sleeping today you may look outside and think what's happening in this world what's happening in my life what's happening in my family what's happening in my bank account you may look at those things and things and think God has forgotten me God's not sleeping he already won the victory he's waiting on you to call on his name Call on the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it, and they are safe. They are saved. That name, above all names, only Jesus. And then it says, only by defeating the power of the devil, only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to fear. So you think, Okay, well, that's great that Jesus defeated the devil. What does that mean to me? That means you're free. His victory has been given to you. Matthew 28, it's like 18 through 20 verses. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That's what he said when he was raised from the dead. He said, all authority in, hev on, in heaven and on earth. And Philippians 2 says, and below the earth. He has authority in all three planes, above the earth, on the earth, below the earth, in this age and in the age which is to come. He said, all authority has been given to me. Now you go in that authority. Now I'm giving you the authority. I'm giving you the authority to trample on serpents. I'm giving you the authority to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. I'm giving you the authority to cast out demons. I'm giving you the authority to walk in victory. I'm giving you the authority over every sin that has beset your life. I'm giving it to you now. He won the battle. We get the spoils. That's why the Bible calls us more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loved us. We didn't fight the battle. He fought the battle. We get to enjoy the victory. We get to walk in all of the victory in this life and then all through eternity. But only through Jesus can you see that come, become a reality in your life. You are set free will you be free he won every victory for you he came to do something about your pain you know this 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 scripture in hebrews goes on to say 
He didn't come to help angels. Angels don't need help. They're in heaven. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. That's you. That's me. He came to help people. Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every way like us so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest like Hebrews 9, 11, and 12 says, where he could go in and offer himself as, as our sacrifice for sin. He tasted every temptation that you taste. He faced things that we face. He became like us. He didn't float around with a halo over his head, immune from heat, immune from hunger, immune from all of these things that we face. He became like we are, yet he was without sin. And that is what qualified him to be our great and our perfect high priest. He is your great and perfect high priest today. Will you call on his name today? Will you call on him to save you? It is only Jesus. It is only him. There is no one else. Well, you can leave here today and you can go, you know, you can, you can travel the world and look for something to satisfy you. But many of you, I know if you're anywhere close to my age, you've tried a few things. And you will see that something may satisfy for a moment. Sin is pleasurable for a moment. That's what the Bible says. But in the end, it leads to death. And if you've lived long enough, you've realized, yep, that, that pleasure only led me to a dead end. It led me to death. Sin always, that's a spiritual law, as sure as sure can be, sin will always lead to death. And if it doesn't get you in this life, it gets you in eternity. Only Jesus. The Bible calls him the only true God, the only begotten son, the only one you are to fear. You know why it says he's the only one you are to fear? Because he can destroy both body and soul in hell. He is the one who all judgment has been committed unto. One day every man, every woman will stand before him and will either hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, or will hear, depart from me, I never knew you. So don't fear man. What can man do to you? What can anyone on this earth do to you? Nothing. We fear God and we fear God alone because he's the only one who can destroy it, who can, you know, who makes the judgment about where we spend eternity. He's called the only wise God, the only one who makes us dwell in safety, the only name under heaven by which men can be saved, the only mediator between God and man. And he himself said, I am the only way, the only truth, and the only life. No one can come to the Father except through him. We don't prance around it. We don't dance around it. It's only Jesus. It's only him. And the reason why it's so such a serious thing, such an important thing, is because it's only when you call on him that your sin is dealt with you become a temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is sent to live inside of you. And your feet are set on a solid rock. And that's where you begin to build your life. I talk to many people. And you know, I'm, I just, I'm always inviting people to church. I'm a pastor. So I'm always like, you should come to church. You should come to church. And many, many people say, I just got to get some things right in my life first. I got to get this in order. I got to deal with some things before I come to church. That's like sinking sand. 
when you come to Jesus, when you call on his name, he's putting your feet on a rock. Now you have something to build your life on. You may have tried many times to, you know, I want to be a better person. I want to be a better mother or father or, or, or what, whatever it is. I want to be a better wife or a husband or a friend. You may have tried many times and just you end up back in the same place. That's because you're building on a foundation of sand. It's shifty. It's, it's not solid. It, you're not going to be able to get far. As soon as you think you've gotten a little bit accomplished, Wind comes, rain comes, and it's gone. But Jesus is the solid rock. You can build on the decision that you make here today. I'm not saying you're going to walk out the door and everything's going to be suddenly, miraculously turned around. But you're putting your feet on a foundation you can build on. You're coming out of the control of the enemy. You're coming out of his kingdom and into God's kingdom. The way, the truth, and the life. So here's what I want to do. I want to give you an opportunity today. And if the worship teams, uh, if you can make your way back up here. And I just would ask that other, other than the worship team, if everybody, just for the next about five minutes, ten minutes, just be very still because this is the most sacred moment, maybe of your life. If you're here today and you have never called on the name of Jesus, it sounds like I'm telling your life story. You've tried everything else. You're just kind of like flustered. What else can I do? I'm trying and it does nothing seems to work. It's because you haven't called on the only name. The only name. A very narrow way. Not a wide path. A very narrow way. Jesus and through Jesus only. Can you be saved? I want to do this just to show reverence for the Lord. Can everybody please just stand to our feet? I'm going to preach the gospel to you in five scriptures. Romans 3.23 says we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That means there's not a single person that you can you'll ever meet that didn't have sin. Not a single person. If you're saved here today, you've already called on Jesus' name, you are a saint. You're not a sinner anymore. You're a saint. But we all start out in the same place. Every one of us has sinned and fallen short. And Romans 6.23 says, the penalty for sin is death. You can't talk your way out of it. You can't do good to get out of it. The penalty, you can't atone for your own sin. Only Jesus can. Romans 5, 8 says, but while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. At your worst, you may have been cursing his name or using his name as a curse word. You may have been doing things you're so ashamed of now, you, you won't even let your mind think about those things. But he knew. And while you were still a sinner, he gave his life for you. He had you in mind. Romans 10, 13 says, all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Every single, this is a sure thing that if you call on his name today, You've heard his word, and his word gets into your heart, and the Holy Spirit is inside of you exploding, saying, yes, this is true, this is true. And if you'll call on his name, you shall be saved. And then Romans 10, 9 and 10 tells you how to call on his name. It says, if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died for you and was raised from the dead on the third day, and if you confess it with your mouth, you shall be saved. 
possibly the first enemy you're going to have to destroy in becoming a Christian is your pride. Because you need to call on him. You need to not worry about people around you or who else is here who else is getting saved who might who might look at me who might know that I need saved I got news for you brothers and sisters we all needed a savior and your pride you may walk out of here thinking you won because you didn't lay your pride down but your pride will cost you your life so with every head bowed and every eye closed what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. First, I'm going to ask you to have the boldness and the courage to raise your hand if you want to receive Jesus. And then I'm going to ask you to have the boldness and courage to step out of the crowd. It's going to be your first act of courage. Hallelujah. See, they're already coming. You come up here. All right. Now, and, and listen, let's stay every head bowed and every eye closed. If you want to receive Jesus today, lift your hand up and then make your way up to this altar of grace. This is an altar of grace. This is the place where you lay down everything that has tormented you. This is the place where you lay down every sin, where you lay down everything and you pick up life. Lay down death and pick up life. I'm going to wait another few moments because I know there are more. Hallelujah. Thank you for being so bold. You, you all will not have any trouble serving Jesus because you've already been bold enough to step outside, to step out of the crowd. If there's any more, just come. Grab somebody beside you and say, please walk up there with me. I can't walk up there myself. I don't want to walk up there myself. Husbands and wives, if you're in church together for the first time, what a wonderful thing to do for your marriage to both of you. Turn your life over to Jesus. Girlfriends and boyfriends, what, whatever it is, together you can lay down all of that burden, all of that sin today. And you can follow Jesus together. That solid foundation. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. But even while I'm praying, the invitation is open. Make your way up to this altar. Don't let anything stop you today. This is the greatest day. This is the greatest day of your life. Because everything's going to change from here on out. So I want you just to pray this prayer after me because the Bible says you must confess with your mouth. There's nothing magical about this prayer. It's just some you're putting words to something that has happened in your heart. So I want you to just repeat after me. Just say, Heavenly Father, I know I've sinned. And I'm sorry for my sin. I turn away from it to follow you. I believe Jesus died for me and you raised him from the dead. I call on him to be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Thank you that I'm brand new. Thank you that I'm born again. Thank you that I'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, I want you to just lift your hands to the Lord. That's a sign of surrender. And I'm, I just want to pray with you. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for my new brothers and sisters. I, I, I thank you that they were bold enough to step out and to call on your son the only way. Father, I pray blessing on them. That every, and I thank you, Lord. Your word says that Jesus became a curse so that every curse would be broken off of their lives. So in the name of Jesus, by his authority, I declare every curse is broken off of their lives now in Jesus' name. The curse of sin is broken. The curse of sickness is broken. If there be anything in their bodies, Lord, in their physical bodies of sickness, we tell it to die now by the authority of the name of Jesus and for them to be made well by that same name. Hallelujah. I curse, I, I 
I, I just thank you, Lord, that the curse of poverty is broken off of their lives now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that you have set their feet on a solid rock. And from today, they will begin to build on that foundation. And this will be the lowest they've ever been. They will mark this day. This is the day that things began to shift. This is the day that things began to change. From the moment they called on your name, hallelujah, I thank you, Lord, that now they are your dear children, that you are their good father, and that they have life in front of them. And, Lord, I thank you for the future that they have now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the family of God. Now, one second. I just want to tell you a couple of things. Number one, Lori's going to give you a book and she's going to give you a Bible. The book is, I wrote it, and it's just to help people because what, what I've seen is you know, people get saved, but then they don't know, what do I do next? What do I do next? That's why I wrote that book, so that you know the next things that you need to do. But I'll, I'll spoiler alert, I'll tell you what's in there. Be in church next week. This is a family. You've joined the family of God. So that's what we do together as a church. We walk together. We serve God. We help each other get to heaven. Jesus made the way. We help each other to stay on the way, to stay on the path. Get a Bible, and she's going to give you a Bible if you don't have a Bible, or even if you do and you want another one. Read your Bible, but be in church Wednesday. Be in church Sunday. Be here when the doors are open. And I'm telling you, you're building on the only foundation now. Your lives are going to be changed forever in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So if you'll go see that beautiful lady right over there, she will help you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is so good. Listen, I know because I sat in many church services with my heart beating out of my chest, but too afraid to step out of the crowd. If that was you today, and you still prayed that prayer, you're saved. Don't go home feeling disappointed. Don't go home feeling like, I failed. I failed already. <laughs> you didn't fail. You call on his name. You called on his name. Only his name. Only his name can, 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 can you be saved. If you did pray that prayer in your seat today, Please see Lori because we want to give you the everything's free. We don't charge you for anything here. So please see see Lori because she'll give you a copy of that book. Because all what's important is for you to start on that path of serving Jesus. That's what's most important. Even if uh, it's Easter, it's a holiday. Even if you didn't pray that prayer today, ask Lori and we'll give you a free book. Because uh, we want you to be successful. We want you to be victorious in your walk with Jesus. Is there anything else we need to cover today? All right, let's, let's just pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for what you've done in this place. And, and it's just the beginning. Today was ready, set, go. But there's a whole race in front of us. And I pray that every person that was in this house today would be in this house next Sunday, that we could run this race together and work together to see the Ohio Valley saved, to see people brought out of darkness and into light. Father, I thank you that by your spirit, you're doing many mighty things. We love you. We thank you for the precious name of Jesus. And we pray it all in his name. Amen. Just before we close, yeah, give him a hand clap. Give Jesus a hand clap. Before we close, because I forgot to do it earlier, we want to thank Debbie Puss Carriage at Push Puss Carriage Accounting. It's hard to say. She donated our live flowers today, so that was very generous of her, very sweet of her. Um, and we also want you to get a family picture with your family. So if you haven't already, go back there. We'll have some people uh, that will take pictures for you, and then we'll put them on Facebook. And so you'll have a copy for yourself. We want you to enjoy your family. I mean, hey, 
what, a, what more to celebrate today than people being brought into the kingdom of God. So the worship team is going to sing a song of victory. We got to get something fast. We got to get something good, something upbeat. We're going to close with that song of victory and just put an exclamation point on the end of this service by praising the Lord. Crazy. 